In this video, we'll be looking at multiplying algebraic terms with indices, a somewhat complicated title. What we mean is we're going to be multiplying terms with both letters and numbers and indices. A little bit of language. The number four here is referred to as a coefficient because the coefficient is the number in front of the letters. Similarly, six is also a coefficient. We also use the term base. The base is A. A is a base. B is a base. Here A and B are again bases. Our question to be answered today is how do we multiply these two terms? And the rules are actually very, very simple. We multiply the coefficients. 4 multiplied by 6 is 24. However, we then look at the bases with indices. We have a to the power of 7 and a to the power of 3. We add indices on the same base. The base does not change. The base is a, but we have a to the power of 10. Similarly, b cubed and b to the power of 4 means it is b to the power of 7. So far, so good. We now have an array of similar types of problems. In the first one, we multiply our coefficients. 4 multiplied by 7 is 28. When we look at our bases, we have an a squared and another a squared. a to the power of 2, a to the power of 2. We add a to the power of 4. b to the power of 9, b to the power of 10 is b to the power of 19. In our next question, similarly, in this case, we have three different bases, a, b, and c, but the process is the same. We multiply our coefficients. 8 times 10 is 80. a cubed multiplied by a to the power of 4, a to the 7, adding indices there, b to the power of 10, and c to the power of 9. Again, fundamentally in mathematics, we must follow a set of rules. We don't guess. We don't make things up. The next question has a smaller, has a small problem associated with it. The b has no index. It's actually b to the power of 1. 4 multiplied by 5 is 20. a to the power of 3. And again, this is an a to the power of 1. Gives us a to the power of 4. b to the power of 1 times b to the power of 8. b to the power of 9. So as a rule, if there is no index on a number, the, in, the invisible index is a 1. The next question is similar. We have coefficients that multiply to give us 15. a to the power of 7. b with no power is a b to the 1. b with no power is a b to the 1, which gives us a b to the power of 2, commonly known as b squared. However, we have a c to the power of 4. There is no c term. Remains as a c to the power of 4. If you like, you could imagine in here, it's actually c to the power of 0. Because as we know, c to the power of 0 is 1. Moving on, in the next question, we have... Another anomaly. The first term is missing the coefficient. That is because the coefficient is 1. 
it is absolutely not zero. The coefficient is one. One times six is six. And we have a to the power of five, b to the power of 15. Our last question on this page, a bit of a brain teaser, but we apply the same rules. a to the power of a half, b, is missing its coefficient. The coefficient is, of course, 1. So we have 7 multiplied by 1. a to the power of a half multiplied by a to the power of half. We apply our rules. We add indices. And a half plus a half is 1. b to the power of 6 multiplied by b gives us b to the power of 7. Traditionally, we don't write a to the 1, so we just call it a. And the answer is 7a, b to the 7. Finally, we have a much simpler question, which often proves to be much harder. What is ab times 2ab? It is not guesswork. Consider the things we don't know. There is a coefficient of 1, which is usually invisible. The a's and the b's are all indeed to the power of 1. Multiplying our coefficients, 1 multiplied by 2 is 2, and we add our powers. a to the 1, a to the 1 gives a squared, b to the 1 times b to the 1, b squared, which gives us our answer, 2 a squared, B squared.